The invisible enemy she had lived and worked with for decades was finally making its devastating presence known. Her health began a steep and irreversible decline. The first clear sign was in her eyes. She was diagnosed with cataracts, and her vision grew so clouded that she was forced to write her laboratory notes in enormous letters. Today, it's known that cataracts are a common consequence of radiation exposure. She endured four painful eye surgeries, all while trying to hide the true nature of her illness, terrified that it would tarnish the reputation of her beloved radium. Her body, once strong enough to haul sacks of ore and stir vats of chemicals, was systematically failing her. She was plagued by constant fatigue, a persistent low-grade fever, and her hands, the very hands that had held, sifted, and crystallized so much radium, were scarred, cracked, and burned from radiation exposure. Still, she seemed to refuse to connect her deteriorating health to the true cause. She and other researchers of her generation simply didn't understand the profound, long-term cellular damage that radiation could inflict. While she did eventually advocate for safety measures like lead screens and regular blood tests for workers at her institute, she seemed to believe these precautions were for industrial laborers, not for careful scientists like herself. In the spring of 1934, her strength finally gave out. She went home sick from her lab one day and never returned. Her doctors were mystified. Finally, a specialist at the saint Selimos Sanatorium in Passy, France, gave her condition a name. A plastic, pernicious anemia. It is a rare disease where the bone marrow, the body's factory for life-giving blood cells, simply stops working. The director of the sanatorium where she spent her final days wrote a chilling and definitive diagnosis. The bone marrow did not react, probably because it had been injured by a long accumulation of radiation. 